Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be trying to show you quick how to restore this rotary dial on this princess phone. This I just received in the mail from eBay and as you can see, the dial is completely seized. So let's get started on trying to take it apart. On princess phones, they're pretty simple. You just have two flathead screws here on the sides. And what's interesting is this one appears to be very clean for its age. Because it says it was manufactured in 1960 there. But I'm guessing here on the inside, it's not going to be quite as much of the same story. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my vacuum. All right. So, vacuumed up most of that. Now, on the sides here, you'll see there are two flathead screws. So, we're just going to go ahead and loosen those. What I use is Vaseline and 3-in-1 silicone oil. I'm going to go ahead and remove the rotary dial. You get a small screwdriver or toothpick or something. On the inside here of the rotary dial, there's a notch. And you'll see there's a metal clip. And then you can turn it and remove it. That's also how you can change the numbers there. So you can see here, it's very grimy. And Vaseline, I found, works very well for polishing up the plastic and removing the grime. So here I have a rag that's just sort of covered in Vaseline. So you can see already, that's cleaning up a lot. You can also go ahead and wash it in warm water if you remove the plastics completely, which I may do. My main concern though is trying to restore the rotary dial to be able to move. So being that it seems to be very much gummed up, I'm gonna use some of my silicone oil Usually I would avoid using this unless uh, I absolutely have to just because it kind of can be a running mess, but it works very well. So I just applied a few drops, kind of trying to avoid getting it on the plastic excessively. I haven't had it really cause any issues, but... So I can already feel this is turning a lot better as the oil is working its way in there and loosening things up. You can already start to see how it's wanting to move back now. And before, uh, when I first started with it, I mean, it didn't want to move at all. It was... Uh, very much gummy. So you can already see, look at that. It just keep working. So the silicone oil is pretty amazing. It really does help a ton with loosening up parts when they get all gummed up and don't want to move anymore. To do that, you need to remove the finger stop. So you just loosen that flathead screw, pull this out. Again, this is all still very clean considering that it's seized. 
I'm kind of surprised that it is seized, but I guess that with whatever grime was in here, that managed to mess up the gears. But this is like one of the cleanest finger stops I've seen on any of my phones. So now with the finger stop removed, this one has a plate here that uh, seems to be a twist to remove system. There. Oh, and additionally, you need to pull off the nut. There we go. Now I can get spring the top and everything off. So now we can properly clean out underneath the dial and really get it clean and white. So I'll go ahead and clean these components off camera just because it's time consuming, but I'm pretty much just gonna be using soap and water to clean the plastics. And then when I put this back on, I'll need to tension it so that it actually turns the right amount. And also the longer you let silicon oil sit, it'll work its way into the gears better. So I'll just let it sit here for a bit and I'm gonna go clean the components. All right, so off camera now, I clean these. So I wash them all with just soap and water. You can see they're a lot better. I notice now this piece is broken. I'm not going to replace it unless it becomes an issue. But if I remember correctly, I don't even think we'll be able to notice that. So hopefully that's not any crucial thing. Uh, finger wheel looks a lot better now. Anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up a bit. And then I'm going to start putting the dial back together on the top. I'm not going to try and take apart anything else. Plus, this is pretty much like riveted together. So uh, we could remove this cover on the back. So if we needed to, we could remove that but most likely we'll just be cleaning it and putting it back together. I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum this dust up. All right, so now I vacuumed up a bit more dust. Um, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and put Vaseline on here and polish it. I like using the Vaseline because it just helps to protect against the rust and it will also help to loosen up parts. So if you plan on restoring a bunch of things, I definitely recommend having a Vaseline cloth like this. I just sort of reuse it. Um, this will just help to preserve the metal underneath and repel water. So in the future, uh, really the rust and stuff shouldn't be as bad. So now it looks like we pretty much removed all that dust and excess like rust uh, corrosion. It's feeling smooth now. You can see it's shiny. It still does have grime, but that's not loose. That's not gonna come off. You could sit and sand it if you wanted to, but I don't really recommend it because then the metal dust will just be getting in things. All right, so now we're gonna put the spring back in. There's a hole right here on the dial that you'll notice. And so this notch on the spring that little hook goes in there.
Um, now we can start trying to tension it. We have to make sure that the spring is actually inside of these notches here so that it doesn't get in the way when we're putting everything back together. And let me just think about this for a second. There. Yeah, so the spring goes this way. So as you're tightening it, you turn it righty tighty. And then the spring will retract back to turn the dial. Now the problem I did not think about is the fact that the rotary dial was still sticky and not really wanting to turn. And it's definitely easier to calibrate the spring if you know that your dial is good. Because <laughs> basically, now when we're gonna try and start, so this is, I'd say still too, this is still too loose but it's getting there. Just go ahead and loosen that. I don't know why this keeps getting stuck. Now we just need to try and find the notch. I'm not sure this screwdriver is just, ugh. All right, so uh, as we know from taking it apart, the notch has two different spots where it can line up. And we know because of this notch that this is in the correct orientation. Basically right here is where the finger stop is. And this notch lines up with the zero. So we know that when we're orienting the spring or tightening it, I should say, that it's either gonna be one full rotation now this way or back. And I've fiddled with it a bit more I think that the spring definitely still doesn't have enough tension. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the nut, pull it off, and then tighten it. So this is starting to definitely have torque on it now. All right, so now I have tightened it one more full rotation. And now you can see if I turn it. And so I definitely think this is the correct tension for the spring, because if I go one more full rotation, I think that'll be way too tight. This seems to be the correct uh, size that the spring was. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it. And also, I guess earlier it was pointless for me to have actually taken this off in the first place because this can come off if you just maneuver it around enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on now and show you. I am sort of glad I took it apart anyway just because I got to clean deeper in versus not taking it off.
So, trying to decide the best method. There's a few of these that have prongs on them, and then this as well, that sort of prevents the rain from going down. And so as you're maneuvering it on, you have to sort of squeeze it into the spring so that you get some extra wiggle room. And then also sort of playing around with the rotation of it. There you go. So now it's back on. And then we need to line up. There's a slot on the bottom plastic ring. This notch is right next to the zero because it's for the finger stop. Then once you have that oriented, just go ahead and turn the metal ring back in. It seems like obviously Western Electric had a special tool for this job because it would have uh, basically lined up with these little holes on that ring. So you could have just tightened it. So they probably had a special wrench. But if it's oiled up enough, you can just do like what I just did. Take a flathead screwdriver or something small, metal, basically push it on one of them and turn it. So that seems to all be fine. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put back the finger stop. I'm gonna go ahead and just polish it up a bit with Vaseline. This really doesn't even need it though. It's in very good condition. But that'll help let it slide into place. And we put back in the screw And right now I have the handset cord removed because I'm restoring the coil on it. So um, I'm not gonna secure this right now just because I'll need to re-secure the wires for the handset cord. Um, I made a new uh, plate paper piece that I'm gonna put in What I did is I just scanned the original with my printer and then I made a new cover. It's a bit tricky to line up with, uh, so it actually looks nice when it's oriented in here. But you can see that's sort of how we want it. A straight line sort of going in between here and here to try and line it up. And when you put it back on, it just turns and clicks. And there it's all working.
and I'll try and dial out later on, but I'm almost 100% sure it'll still work because I've usually never had an issue with the contacts on the rotary dials. But if they do need to be cleaned, I would just uh, carefully remove this plate and then that should expose the contacts underneath. But I won't try that right now unless I need to later, which I'll make a video on. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know.